Hi, we are continuing with the statement of cash flows. This video is covering class 39 if you're in the Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, and this is class 26C for Tuesday, Thursday. So we're continuing on with statement of cash flows, just about there. We've already talked about what it is. It just reconciles net income to the change in cash on the balance sheet. Um, it's divided in three sections, operating, investing, financing, where I talked about operating. We're going to talk about the last two sections right now. All right. <clears throat> so the next section is cash flows from investing activities. So what are that? Well, investing activities affect long-term assets, such as plant assets, investments, and notes receivable. When computing investing cash flows, it is helpful to evaluate the T accounts for each long-term asset. A T account will show if there was an acquisition or disposal that happened that year. So you have to understand um, what came and went. So if you bought or sold a plant asset, um, that will show in the accounts um, and uh, sometimes it can be difficult just uh, looking at the balance sheet but you can see the change but it's hard to know which one you actually bought or sold. Alright, so cash flows from investing. Use the information of value available to determine the cash received from an asset disposal. So cash received is the cost minus accumulation plus gain minus loss. So we need to determine the amount of cash received for the disposal of plant assets. Using the information provided, we can recreate the journey for the disposal and solve for the missing cash amount. We compute the cash receipt from the disposal as follows. Cash received equals cost minus accumulated depreciation uh, plus gain minus loss. And using the figures from this example, the cash received was 50000 right? Uh, 55000 was the cost minus accumulated depreciation, which was 15000 plus the gain, which was ten. So therefore, the cash, you know, was 55000 Cash flows from investing activities includes the receipt from the disposal of plant assets as well as the purchase of plant assets. All right, so in this partial statement, we're showing only the investing activities section of the statement of cash flows. Remember, the investing activities section is reported after operating activities. So remember, last video, we had operating activity, we had net income, cash from operating activities, and then we're down to the um, flows from investing. So you got your cash payment for acquisition, which is a cash flow out, and cash receipt from disposal, 50000 um, net cash from investing. So typically you're looking at the acquisition and disposal of plant assets. And whatever that is, you paid, you, if you bought some, cash went out. If you sold some, cash came in. And the difference is your net cash. And that's it. That's pretty easy. And a problem for an exam, I would just tell you here's how much it was for each of those things. So that's it. Investing activities involves the plant assets of the balance sheet. You go look and see, did you sell some? Did you buy some? What cash happened? <laughs> and you either add it or subtract it in the um, cash flows from investing activities. That's all there is to that. Then there's another section called cash flows from financing activities. And financing activities affect the long-term liability and equity accounts. So financing activities are how you finance the business, whether you borrow money, like using bonds, or using notes payable, or whether you have owners invest paid in capital through stocks, common or preferred. However you're getting your financing, that goes in this section of the cash flow statement. Financing activities affect the long-term liability and equity accounts, long-term notes payable, bonds payable, common stock retained earnings. Financing activities are these accounts. <coughs> All right, 
So, <coughs> if the amount of cash dividends payment is not readily <coughs> available, which that would not be, in our class I'll just tell you dividends were this much, you can use the retained earnings account to determine dividends. Right, so basically this is showing you how to back into dividends. I, I don't know why that would not be available. They're, I think they're just trying to get you to use some algebra to understand how retained earnings work. Um, so dividend payments can be computed by analyzing the retained earnings account. I suppose, well, if you did not have access to the amount they paid in dividends, let's suppose you had only a balance sheet and only an income statement. Well, even if you had the retained earnings statement, you would have the dividends. So I don't know why they're having you do this. But end of retained earnings equals beginning retained earnings plus net income minus net loss minus dividends. So if you didn't know dividends, you flip that around, right, algebraically, um, and calculate the dividends. Like I said, it's hard for me to think right off the top of my head why you would need to do that. But you do need to know dividends sometimes. Um, so here's your cash flow from financing activities section of the cash flow statement. So remember, cash flow statement starts from indirect, like we're doing. Starts with net income. Then you add and subtract your cash flows from operations. Add and subtract your cash flows from investing, which is the plant assets that you buy and sell. And then finally, cash flows from financing activities, which is how you finance your company. So that's your long-term liabilities and your owner's equity, stockholder's equity. So what are cash flows from there? Well, you might issue notes payable that brought cash in. You might pay off some notes payable, which puts cash out. Um, you might issue stock, which brings cash in. You might purchase back some of your stock and turn it into treasury stock, which, brings, which means you paid cash out. And of course, when you pay cash dividends, you're paying it out. So then you can calculate your net cash provided by those financing activities. Then once you've figured out all your, your, financing, your operating, investing, and financing activities, now you're ready to look at the change, right? Because that's what we're doing. We're trying to take last year's cash, see how it relates to this year's cash, as affected by net income. So we, that's why we start with net income at the top. So you take cash provided by operating, cash used for investing because it looks like we paid out more so it's not provided, it's used. And then cash provided by financing and the net of those 70,000 minus 260 plus 170 equals negative 20,000. You take negative 20,000, add it to the beginning cash balance and that gives you your ending cash balance. So those numbers that You've reconciled the cash flow. You, you've looked at how the income statement affected the cash flows and what parts were from operating, um, investing, and financing. And you've got an increase or decrease in cash that you already knew from the balance sheet. But what you're doing here is trying to figure out, well, yeah, but of those cash flows, that change, where did it come from? Is it from running the business operating? Or did they get a bunch of cash in by borrowing it? Right, so this is a nice clear picture of what's going on with cash. So, <clears throat> sometimes there's some non-cash investing and financing, right? Uh, so, um, that example, like last uh, chapter, when we traded stock for a building, um, that kind of thing. Some non-cash investing and financing. So the last step is to do the separate section, right? Uh, non-cash investing and financing. The last step is to prepare the non-cash investing and financing section. This section appears as a separate schedule or in the notes. So it's not a formal part of those three sections. It's not operating. It's not in the op cash flows from operating. It's not in the cash flows from investing. It's not in the cash flows from financing. because It's not cash. If you traded stock for a building, there was no cash. And in this case, <clears throat> there was an acquisition of a building by issuing common stock. There was acquisition of land by issuing a note payable. And there was a retirement of notes payable by issuing common stock. So that meant your total non-cash activities were $470,000. Um, so that's kind of interesting. All right now, the next thing 
you know, every chapter we've been talking about some ratios. And now we're going to look at something called free cash flows. This is all um, FCF, free cash flow. You finance majors will really like this. This is important to investors. They want to make sure you have enough cash to, to pay off your loans and give some dividends. So it's like long invest in assets. So when people are thinking about investing in a company, they look at free cash flow to help decide, oh, is that a company that's going to be growing and investing and paying off its loans, or do they have cash flow problems? So free cash flow is the amount of cash available from operating activities after paying for planned investments. Throughout this chapter, we focused on cash flows from operating, investing, and financing activities. Some investors want to know how much cash a company can free up for new opportunities. Free cash flow is the amount of cash available from operating activities after paying for planned investments in long-term assets and after paying dividends to shareholders. Free cash flow equals net cash provided by operating activities minus cash payments planned for investments in long-term assets minus cash dividends. How do we use free cash flow to evaluate business performance? Well, many companies use free cash flow to estimate the amount of cash that would be available for unexpected opportunities. Shopmart's free cash flow equals 25,000, which you get by taking 200,000 uh, minus 160,000 minus 15,000, right? Because we know they have 200,000 cash, they're planning to spend 160,000, and they know they're going to pay 15,000 in dividends. So that's free cash flow. So you could say, oh, they've got an, some extra money. They've got uh, 25,000 free cash flow that they could spend on something. Right? So investors like that. They like to see some free cash flow because, you know, if an opportunity comes along, they don't want that company to miss it. All right, so that's it on cash flow statements. We'll do some in class. Um, I think it will become clear once you start working on it. So work those homeworks, do the in-class problems. Um, it's, uh, it's a very useful financial statement, especially for investors, especially for you finance majors. You'll really like the cash flow statement. Um, okay, thanks. We'll see you on the next chapter. Thanks.